Imagine a world where we could save billions, if not trillions of dollars of wasted taxpayer money, and at the same time cut our carbon emissions in half. This is actually entirely possible. But we're not talking about it because we have political institutions that are entrenched holding our fossil fuel subsidies in place. At the upside, we always want to be looking towards the future, not the past. So I want to talk to one of my professors, an environmental economist from the Middlebury Institute of International Studies, Jason Scores, who's going to tell us a little bit about where our fossil fuel subsidies stand right now and what the world could look like without them. So here's a few things to, to realize about climate change that I think escapes most people's attention. So the first thing is, is that it's now. It's not a hypothetical, it's not in the future. Climate change is now. We're building bridges, roads, and we're doing public investments that are going to last 50, 75, 100 years. If we don't do them smart, they're going to get destroyed. The other side of the coin is, if you're anti-big government, you should really, really want to deal with climate change. And why is that? David Robert, when he was at Grist, pointed this out. If we get really bad climate change, right? We don't do enough about it and we're not smart. What's going to happen when our cities are getting destroyed and when the crops are being destroyed and we're running out of water, then it's going to be real big government. And when we talk about environmental policy and economic policy, what are the biggest challenges we have there? So what we're doing currently is we're subsidizing lots of bad behavior. So the a new a report just came out that the, the subsidies to the fossil fuel industry globally is over $5 trillion a year. It's more than the entire world spends on healthcare. So we literally give the fossil fuel industry more money than we spend on healthcare a year, globally. That's insane. That's just straight up insane. You go, well, how can that happen? A, because most people don't know it, it's hidden. And B, because the fossil fuel industry is very powerful and they own politicians and this is not news to anybody. In economics, called perverse subsidies paying people to do bad things. And we don't just do that with fossil fuels. Like, a lot of times we own, you know, the government will own a national forest and they'll build roads into the forest that make it easy for logging companies to come in and take the timber. If the logging companies had to pay for the roads themselves, the timber would be uneconomic. So we're perversely subsidizing environmental degradation. If you had a magic wand to change environmental policy, what would you do? If I could wave a magic wand, I would just end all these perverse subsidies around the world. You, the world would be a much better place just automatically. Stop paying the people who are destroying the ecosystems. If we could just do that, let's incorporate the pollution costs, the healthcare costs of our activities into the cost of products. So fossil fuel not only shouldn't get paid to explore in the Gulf of Mexico, but they should actually get charged a carbon tax and an air pollution tax. And we could call this fees or whatever, call it a pollution fee, whatever the semantics is to make people understand it. If we could invert fossil fuel subsidies for, say, renewable energy subsidies, what would that look like? So if I waved that magic wand and I did these two things, air pollution would probably be reduced by 60, 70 percent in the world, so there wouldn't be kids getting as much asthma and dying of respiratory illness. So now think, what's the next thing? Let's jumpstart the battery technology. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome if we all had batteries for a house, we could get off the grid? So what's the next step of that? Think ahead. That's where we're good in America. You know, we don't we want to think behind. Actually, the good news is even with all the obstacles we put in the way, solar is, is blowing up right now. It's getting really, really cheap. And in fact, it's not predicted that two thirds of all new power generation in the developing world will, will be renewable. So like they're, you know, China, India, Brazil, like they're, they're leapfrogging. If you want more of The Upside, please let us know what you think in the comments below, share this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.